What's up guys, I'm Matt Gary, and on this 14th episode of the Separation of Concerns and Apex Common tutorial series, we're going to go over how to implement the selector layer using the Apex Common library. All right, guys, so welcome to this 14th episode of the uh, Separation of Concerns and Apex Common tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to go over how to implement the selector layer using the Apex Common library. And uh, yeah, so let's get started. I mean, what we're going to go over is uh, a few things. Obviously, we're going to create an example together of how to do this. Um, we're going to go over some uh, how to create custom queries, how to use uh, some of the pre-built methods, and you know, the typical thing I always do, which is why you would choose to use the Apex Common Library to do this. So, um, yeah, let's get started. Well, we'll start like I typically do. Why would you decide to use the Apex Common Library? I've said this a few times in several of the videos now. <laughs> But as far as why you would choose to use the Apex Common Library, it's really well built. It handles all of the different layers, a selector layer, service layer, unit of work, which isn't technically a layer, but um, it's important that you use something like it. And um, the uh, domain layer, <laughs> forgot where I was. So it's got uh, selector, service, unit of work, domain layer, all of those things thought out really well, not to mention it also integrates well with the Apex Mox, which is also a pretty great library, which we're going to go over in the next three episodes, 15, 16, and 17. Um, cool. So as far as why, I really just think um, after spending a lot of time with this library and looking through all of the code in it, that it is a uh, extremely well built not to mention there's a lot of people that are invested in it that are upkeeping it um, so yeah those are my feelings <laughs> you're free to to have your own of course um, definitely do your own research I'm, I'm just a guy I've spent my own time here um, but feel free to make your own decisions on what you think is best for you those are just that's just how I feel it's a well built library great support um, and it handles all the different layers so you don't have to go mix and match a bunch of libraries together to handle all all those layers or roll your own for every single one which I can tell you is an undertaking I've attempted it it's probably yeah you probably don't want to <laughs> all right so let's figure out how to to um, implement the selector layer with the apex common library um, so, I don't think I have an account selector yet. Let's um, create an account selector, and uh, I'll move that one over there, just like I always do to make sure I don't do anything really dumb uh, when I'm trying to teach you guys this stuff, because, uh, you know, you probably don't need that in your life. M more time wasted listening to me. So... <laughs> The first thing that we're going to want to do is extend the fflib um, s object selector class for our selectors that we want to um, build using the Apex Common Library. That way, we'll be able to use all the functionality from the fflib s object creator class. That's what that extends means. Um, we'll go over it a little bit more in a bit, and I've gone over it in a couple of videos in the past, I think. Uh, for this series. There are a handful of things that you should know about. The first thing is the the methods that you need to implement despite it not forcing you to implement these methods. It is important. Um, so the first one that we need to implement is this public list schema ooh, schema object field and we'll, 
this method is called um, should be called s object field list cool and what it will return is a new list of schema s object and I'll explain what this method is doing here in just a moment so bear with me okay so what is this method for basically this method is um, going to grab these fields for every query that you do so for every query that you make with your account selector um, which will create a query in a bit and just prove that this is true you are going to select it the selector is going to automatically select these fields for you in the query so say for instance I want my account ID to be selected I would put account.id maybe I want the account name uh, and maybe that's it maybe that's all I want in all my queries is is that to be returned to me um, <clears throat> what's this complaining about now uh, it'll figure itself out um, I needed a semicolon that's important <laughs> okay um, so basically what it's gonna do now is every single time I make a query it's going to always select the ID and the name now you might be like why would I want that but chances are even if you haven't ever thought about it chances are a lot of your queries on an object are querying for very similar fields like it's very possible that well number one a hundred percent of the time if you didn't know the uh, ID field is queried for Salesforce does that in the background even if you don't explicitly add that to your query it's doing that um, and it's better to explicitly add it than to not in my opinion otherwise you get for some very confusing code um, probably a lot of your queries are are querying for name maybe create a date things along those lines so if your queries are consistently calling or querying for these um, fields you'd ideally want to put them here right okay so that's what this method is going to do if you set this up the second thing that you do need to set up in here is public schema s object type get s object And then you would just return account dot s object type. So this is important. You you do have to implement this even if even though it doesn't force you to. Otherwise, there's going to be you're going to run into some issues. It's used in uh, several places behind the scenes. Uh, so it is important that you you do implement this method. Otherwise. The FF the best object creator is eventually going to cry about it and be like, but you didn't tell me what the object type is. So um, <laughs> just make sure that you implement this method. Okay. Um, these are the two uh, methods that you definitely need to implement in every selector class that you make. And I don't think I said it in this video, but I said it in my last video. You should make a selector class for every object that you're querying on. And I explained that a lot more in, in depth in the video and in the wiki and I'm or in the previous video and in the previous uh, videos, you know, wiki page that corresponds with it. So I'm not going to go over it more here, but just know you should create a selector class for each class for each object in your system that you are querying on. Okay, the second thing that I want to go over really quick is the constructor I'm just gonna copy this over so it's a little easier to just go through this really quickly um, and this should not be contact but rather account so what is this constructor doing um, by default <coughs> the FFLib S object selector has ooh, 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 several fields that are set um, in a particular way. So 
let's find this. There we go. Maybe. Let's find the default constructor. So the default constructor is empty. And that's important because a bunch of these variables here can be set if you want them to be set. And I'll go over what these default variables do and their defaults, right? So this include field sets variable allows you to query using field sets if you want to. So if you want your if you want this to change by default in here, you need to send it that parameter in the constructor and we'll go back to that in a second. There's also this a boolean in here that makes it so that your um, selector will enforce field level security for the running user. Uh, this also allows you to enforce CRUD security on your S object selector. Um, and then there's this sort select fields which basically alphabetically sorts your selected fields in the actual query which that's confusing but I'll show you what I mean by that in a bit so if you wanted any of those things to change by default uh, I believe all of them so we've got enforce crud being true by default sorting select fields being true and then FLS is false and including field sets is false if you wanted to change any of those by default in your account selector you would call the super methods constructor so if you don't know what super means super is referring to this class the class that is basically the parent or the super of this class that is extending it so we're calling this super constructor or the FFLibS object selectors constructor and passing it false true true false and you can see here the parameter one if you want it to query for field sets, you'd set this to true. If you'd like to enforce CRUD security by default, you'd set this to true. FLS is the third parameter. And if you want to sort your selected queries, or your select selected fields in your query, then you'd set this to, to true as well. You should only do that if you want this to default this way, like always, in your account selector or your whatever selector you're building right uh, otherwise there are other ways to set these values in the class and um, I'll briefly go over it I hope <laughs> I hope I can get to it all right so uh, we've got this shell of the um, selector class set up we know that there are these overrides to set these different you know things if we want to leverage them if we want to leverage field sets if we want to use uh, crud and FLS security and if we want to sort our selected fields and really quick just so I show you what I mean um, if you didn't sort your selected fields then maybe you have like select description here select name here select description there select ID here but if you do decide to sort your selected fields it would sort them alphabetically so it would be ID name like that so D comes before I and I comes before N that's all it's doing <laughs> so if you don't want it to do that you know shut that off it'll save you a, a small amount of processing time but some people like it that way um, and uh, so there's no there's not a lot of harm in it most of the time okay cool we've gone over that what should we go over next the the next one that is um, useful to to uh, leverage in here is there is a <clears throat> well we'll just write it together so say you want to select your objects or records rather by ID and we want to return a list of account and select by ID. And we want to send this a set of IDs and contact IDs. Whoa, I'm not on a contact. I'm on an account. OK. 
account IDs? Well, there is a method in the FFLib S object selector class that allows you to do this already. Uh, we can cast this and return it a little to make it a little easier for us in the future. But there's a method called select S objects by ID, and we can send it the account IDs. So let me just kind of show you what this ends up doing. It basically queries using, oh, by the way, I hit Control B in IntelliJ to go straight to this uh, method declaration in the FFLibS object selector class. So this guy, Control B is pretty cool. Um, all right, so you can see basically it's going to end up querying by ID, which is uh, pretty awesome. It's just going to go on ahead and, and uh, do that query for us because that's an all too common query is to select objects with the ID in this set of IDs, right? Um, yeah. So that's a pretty cool one to leverage, one that I leverage pretty frequently. But let's go over, um, well, okay, first things first. Let's just prove that this selector works, right? We've got this uh, account ID uh, or this account selector, and we've got this select by ID method. Let's just prove that it's going to actually return a, re return to us uh, a list of accounts with the ID in the name uh, field in them. So we will do that in the execute, execute anonymous window down here, and we'll say account selector select accounts equals new account oh. selector All right and then we uh, are going to need to make a couple of accounts just to prove that we can grab them by ID so we'll say um, account account new equals uh, yeah no I'm right new account and we'll say uh, I think the only thing you have to fill out on the account is the name oh and I think I think I've got a couple of things on a trigger let me just stop this trigger from running so I don't have to fill out a bunch of stuff mm-hmm mm. Something failed, which is what I like to see. Uh, let's see what it was. Some stuff that is probably not important, but let's just first save this guy. Cool. And, oh, it's complaining about this computer creator class. That's it. And we'll save this. Um, account selector cool that's all working good and let's uh, head down here and uh, insert our account new and then we'll say select accounts dot select select by ID and pass it our uh, Pass it a new set with account new dot id. I do need to make sure though that this set is of type id. That's important. And uh, we'll have this return to me a list of accounts. Account list equals that. And we will just create a debug of this account list. Cool, 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 cool. So hopefully this should select, uh, using this code we've created a new account, um, and using our selector we should be able to select 
this account by its ID. So let's just figure out if it works. And it looks like it probably did. Yep. This, oh, there it is. This is the account list right here. So we've got our ID. I don't know if you guys can read this. It's right here at the bottom. Uh, but our debug statement has grabbed the account, its ID, and its name. So it did select those fields that we put in here. And if we put in something like account.description, and we actually filled out description to say description equals tacos, and saved this, and ran it again we should hopefully see that the description gets added, right? So you can see that down there, the description did indeed get added because we added it here. And you can also see, like I was talking about earlier, that it ordered them, ordered those fields in alphabetical order, description, ID, name. <laughs> so, all right, that's cool, but what about more complicated queries? How do we get into this whole uh, custom query setup. Um, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, actually, really quick, one thing that I do want to go over before we get into that is to how to, how to set your default ordering. Um, with the Apex Common S Object Selector uh, class by default, if your object has a name field that you're creating a selector for, some don't, it will use the um, name field if there is no name field on an object, it will use the, um, I believe, the created date field to order things. But if you don't want it to order on that and you wanted it to order on something different, you can actually override that uh, by saying public override string get order by and you would have this return the field that you wanted it to order on. So maybe I want it to order on the uh, description field, right? That's how you would change up your order by. And if you wanted it to be on multiple fields, you can also do that too. So if you wanted it to order on description and name and ID, you would just comma separate them out like that. And then you'd get your you know, the ordering that you wanted. Pretty cool and pretty simple. So this is how you set it for your default, right, for the majority of your queries. But we'll go over how to, to change that up for custom queries that you want it to order in a different way, right? All right, so say we don't want one of these simplified um, select, you know, select methods that are pre-built for us. We want to make our own select method. Well, we do that by adding a new method in here, say, select by name or something. Select account or accounts, really, by name. And <clears throat> we'd send it in a set of strings, potentially, and it would be uh, account names. Cool. Now, what is it, you know, what are, what are we going to do next to build this query? Um, what we're going to do is the following. We're going to say new query factory, and the query factory effectively ends up being an implementation of this class, or like an instance, not an implementation, but an instance of this FFlib query factory class. So we're saying new query factory, and this is a method that is accessible to us through the FFlib S object selector class, right? That's what this new query factory is. There's a couple of overloads for it, so if you wanted to, um, for your query factory, add FLS for this specific query or CRUD or whatever else, there are overloads to allow you to set those different things if you want to change them up.
for this particular query. So if I wanted to do that right, I could just put in something like true, false, true, whatever I ended up wanting those to be. If I want to assert CRUD to be true, FLS, include selector fields, etc. Um, I can override those. And the difference, uh, there's one thing I should say there. That Boolean includes selector fields if you turn this to false. So by default, it's on. But if you turn it to false, what that means is that these fields will no longer be selected. Maybe they're completely irrelevant to this query and you don't want them to show up. Perfectly fine. Just put false in here and they'll go away. Um, and let's see. Say we want a field that we're not selecting in most places on this one. We'd say select field and we'll say account dot um, I don't know uh, last modified by ID. Um, this is also important uh, because let me just actually before I finish this up you will have to use this for relational fields. So say for instance you wanted like account dot uh, I don't think I have a well yeah I do. Okay so say I wanted account owner dot first name or something right. It's not gonna like this if I try to do this. It won't let me declare this up here because this isn't a field on the account this is a field on user. First name is a, a field that's on the, the user object. Um, so if I wanted to grab that information, you actually have to do a custom query. So those relationship chain fields, um, or related fields, whatever you want to call them, you need to do that. Uh, but the way that you would do that in here is you'd say select field. And you can also select fields by their by a string value. So you'd say um, owner dot name or something like that or owner dot uh, we'll say username because owner is a user. And again you can see how this query factory is using the builder pattern which we went over a couple episodes ago so it's good that we went over that and hopefully you understand it a bit. Okay, so we've got a couple new fields in here that we're querying for. Maybe we, and, and now we need to set a query condition. So what, what should we select this by? So we'd say set condition. And then we would say something like um, name in count names. All right. You don't actually want to put the where in here. That is uh, no no bueno. <laughs> Don't put the where in there. Just put all the stuff that comes after the where. Um, the uh, FFLibS object selector, or really the query factory class manages that for you. It's going to automatically put the where in. Uh, maybe you want to change the order. So you could say set ordering. And you would put... Oh, I gotta double check this. I haven't done this in a bit, but the set ordering wants you to put in the field name and the direction. So we'll put in the field name of. We want this to order by mm, last. Actually, I think I can do it this way. Um, account dot last modified by ID and the direction would be ascending and last but not least hopefully I'm expected argument oh it wants the uh, that guy. Um, let me explain this. It's been a bit since I've done this. So set ordering is going to allow you to override the ordering that we put by default up here. 
Um, what I've passed in is the name of the field that I wanted to order by, so the last modified by ID. And then this, um, basically this uh, variable, this sort order ascending, which we can go check out. There are these enums that are set up in the query factory, so just ascending and descending, right? Um, that's all that ends up being but it does want you to use those enums for the the uh, ordering there. Cool, okay, so we've set a new ordering direction. The next thing that we want to maybe do is set a limit. So if we wanted to set a limit, we would say set limit, and we just pass a number. So maybe we only want 100 accounts returned to us with this query. And last but not least, we would say dot to SoQL. Okay, so a lot is happening here, and let me explain it all. You use the select field to select your new fields. If you want a relational field, you've got to use um, text, the text variety of the field name, or a string variety, really. Setting a new condition for how I want to select this and then I'm setting a new ordering by telling it which field I wanted to order by and um, telling it w how I want it to order in an ascending or descending direction and I'm letting it know that I want to set this limit to a hundred and then I'm saying build this SQL query as in actually build the string now that I've set up all these things build the string from it and the last thing that we'll want to do is actually return a list of accounts right now we're returning a string for a query so we would do return a um, well, a list of account and database dot query this guy now hopefully it'll resolve itself and I didn't screw anything up that I've uh, you know because I'm prone to doing that. <laughs> uh, yep, there was something. There it is. Okay. So now we're returning this query. So if we wanted to test this out, see how it goes, we could do, we'll take our execute anonymous that we've already built down here and um, give it a shot. So we'll select this by name. We will send it in a set of strings this time and uh, we'll give it a string called cool account and hopefully we will get this cool account back to us. We'll, uh, we'll see. <laughs> so yeah, we got our one account at, uh, given back to us. We can see it selected the last modified by ID. Um, up here, we can see that it got the cool account. We can see it grabbed the owner ID. Um, so, good stuff. Now, you might be like, hey, uh, Matt, it just selected the owner ID. Where's the owner ID name? Um, I promise you it selected it. It's just, uh, it's an interesting thing when you get these returned in a uh, debug log. They don't actually show the owner dot whatever. They just show that you actually did retrieve the owner ID. But let me, I guess, prove to you really quick that that is the case, just so, you know, you don't think I'm, I'm crazy. Uh, we'll just have this query return to us the actual query that we've built here with our query factory. So we'll see that in the debug log. And then real quick, we'll just see that after doing that selection, we can loop through and get the owner name. This is the username or owner username rather. All right, so let's... Uh, save this and you know uh give it a whirl anyway i can't wait i'm sorry um so 
this is the query. We've selected description, ID, last modified by a name, name, owner, username, from account where, um, whoa, whoa, where we're ordering by last modified ID. Uh, we're sending nulls first. This is another thing you can override if you want to. And a limit of 100. So we did indeed build the query that we anticipated. And when we looped through and said this is the username, you can see that it does indeed give you access to the username. So just in case that's confusing at all, it did indeed get that. We can use it, so no worries. All right. What else is there to cover? Um, there's probably plenty more stuff that we could cover. Uh, when you, let's really quick though go over the initialization, I guess, of a selector using the application factory. So if you don't know what the application factory is, we went over this way, way, way long ago, I think in episode three and four, or two and, yeah, it's three and four. Um, we've got this application class that we made back in episode four, I think. And we are using the application selector factory selector uh, variable. Uh, and what we'll need to do now that we've made a new selector is say, okay, for, for our map of S object type to class type, we now need to say uh, account dot S object type maps to the account selector class, right? So it's important that after you make your selector, you go back here to your selector factory and update that. And then if I was wanting to grab my selector using the application factory, I would, and you want to do it in an abstract way, you would set it up like this. You would say fflib is object selector, object select selector equals application dot selector dot new instance object type so you're gonna pass it in the type of object and it's gonna give you back the selector that you mapped to that object here so if I pass it in account it'll give me my account selector um, class a new instance of it anyway so that's how you would set that up in an abstract fashion for the selector class Otherwise, you're just going to initialize your account selector like you would normally, account selector, you know, the normal stuff, like we just did down here, right? Account selector, select accounts equals new account selector. Cool. But if you want that factory, which, man, is it useful, uh, that is what you would set that up for. Um, whoop, right here. Or how you would set that up right here. And there's uh, one other thing I want to talk about really quick before we move on to the next video. Um, after you've set this up, right, after you've set up your selector, whether it's this way or it's this way, actually, if it's this way, you're going to have to cast it to, to this guy, which you could totally do just this way. If you wanted to, you could say this is going to end up being a S object selector, so just to be cool with it. <laughs> um, what you would end up doing, you, you can't do this if it's an IS object selector, just to be super clear, but if you casted this to the, um, rather the, instead of the interface variety of S object selector, the virtual class, what you'd be able to do now is say S object selector dot enforce FLS. So if you remember way back in the beginning, way, way back at the beginning of this episode, we talked about that um, those overrides for the constructors, right? Where you could set the FLS security and the CRUD security and all that kind of stuff. Well, if you don't want that to just default that way, but maybe in certain scenarios you, you need to enforce it or something, then you have the object to turn these things on and off. So if you wanted to uh, where is it? If you wanted to ignore CRUD, you could ignore it. If you wanted to, um, oh, what are the other ones? <laughs> if you wanted to include field sets all of a sudden, you could do that. If you wanted to um, unsort those 
fields like you didn't want those query fields to be sorted you could you could set all that stuff up using these methods too to basically change those booleans at will right so those are that's important to know that you can you can do that if you'd like to do that and it's um, it's pretty useful right you can kind of change things on the fly so um, there are plenty of things that I do not have time to cover in this video or it would be like two hours long but uh, I have made this wiki uh, in my uh, github repo called Salesforce separation of concerns in the apex common library that explains uh, all of this stuff in even greater detail so if there's anything that you're confused about at all uh, definitely come in here uh, check it out and it should hopefully have that information of course you can always ask me questions if you want to in the comments and I try to respond to them as quick as I can um, but this goes over a bunch of things like we didn't go over how to do subselect queries or inner queries because they're a little less frequently done but this tutorial goes over it uh, it also goes over how to deal with aggregate queries things like that and you know a method cheat sheet like I do for all of the apex common the core apex common classes that um, basically just explain what what each one does and I also have one for the query factory class so you can see all of the different options that you have with the query factoring with the query factor class so uh, pretty pretty cool stuff I think that's probably plenty for this video I think you can probably make most of what you'd need to create now uh, using the or with a selector class using the s object selector portion of the apex common library so uh, hopefully this was helpful I hope anyway and in the next episode whew, we're gonna get into unit tests the difference between unit tests and integration tests and start getting into apex mocks so that is it thanks for watching guys and I'll see you uh, next time